Hello. I'll try to have something to say now. We'll see. <laughs> uh, I will have a couple things, but still. Um, so I am Cornwall Vendling. I'm working at IPRA. Uh, We're a small French company uh, that focuses on... Uh, we started focusing mainly on um, providing, uh, fixing accessibility and providing assist, assist accessibility enabled uh, computers and solutions to uh, impaired people at various level, but mostly in low vision. Uh, and we developed more uh, also um, trying to, to teach more widely like uh, how to use a computer in many different situations for everybody that did not know. So usually it's the elderly people, but we also have a lot of uh, overlap between these two things because there are a lot of elderly that have low vision or come with the ARMD uh, later in the age, so we have a lot of overlap, but we're doing both things at the same time. Um, and uh, what I've did to LibreOffice lately is uh, adding and uh, improving accessibility testing, and for now it's mostly a framework kind of thing. I didn't add like a million tests, I mostly added some ways to for you guys to write more tests. So do, but we'll see that. Um, so again, that was an idea, but you stole it from me. Uh, what is accessibility? <laughs> it's featured that increased social usability for users with certain impediments, as Wick Shadery tells us. I have another source. But yeah, check aside, what does it mean, actually? Um, it's pretty spot on, uh, but it emphasizes a, well, there's a lot of different things that it encompasses, like the most visible ones are the visual things for, for people without disabilities, um, like high contrast um, uh, adjustments for color, and bli color blindness, like if you've got, if you don't see some colors, it's there are some tool to help uh, recreate at least contrast to, to bring back the information, losing colors, but bring back the information. Uh, visual clues for dyslexia, for example, I think there is a, a LibreOffice extension that can does, do that uh, already, like highlighting uh, uh, s sounds in, in, inside the word uh, and different, uh, yeah, where, where sounds changes, uh, specialized fonts for mostly low vision uh, uh, to help differentiate, differentiate uh, characters that may, might look similar. Some are very ugly, but they seem to work. Um, and we have the special input device like motion tracking if you don't have use of all your, well, if you have motion issues. Uh, virtual key keyboard, which is a th thing also for accessibility. And we of course have the specialized output like braille or the most common audio for screen readers. But there are many other more niche things uh, you can try and find everywhere. Um, and we do have then these assistive technologies without the software, but usually software, some hardware, but mo mostly it's software, that help you interact with the computer. Uh, that includes screen readers or Zoom, like the magnifier in GNOME, but there are other tools that do the same, and more speci specialized tools as well. So, and the screen reader, Michael told us what it is, so I don't have to go <laughs> to length to that, but basically it should enable somebody that does not see the screen to navigate it. So it can do that in different ways and different screen readers have different uh, ways of doing things. Most of them do a little bit of everything to make, to adapt to what you, you like. But one common thing is to present um, the object you are uh, with the focus. Um, 
but it does not really help to navigate the interface. So some, sometimes you have uh, tools to uh, jump between things as they are visually uh, on screen, like navigate to things on the rows or columns, uh, or navigate the row uh, tree of accessible elements like and Michael told us there were, were uh, parents and children, so you have like a tree of elements, a root window containing like uh, a container with a menu bar and a uh, and document, etc. and that mess, and you could also navigate that. And so there are different techniques used in different situations. And these tools need information from the clients, as Michael also told us, uh, and the clients are the software like LibreOffice here. Um, and they do talk with the screen readers using the platform interfaces, uh, ATSPI, MSAA, IA2, NSSX30, UAI, or all those, and there's also Android as is his, its thing. Uh, iOS probably uses NSSX accessibility, but I'm not very knowledgeable about that. But they enable uh, the, the software to present itself to assistive technologies in a way it can interact with them. So basically it's making the interface face a, a semantic document, if you will. And it some partially allows to interact with the, with the software as well. Like Michael says, there are some uh, things to change values, uh, even modify text, but it's not, modifying text, for example, is not the preferred way to really interact with a text like in, in, in your document. You're not supposed really to use that. Mostly you're supposed to have the software work like it would for anybody. Like you'd use the software features to interact with the text and not go around it using uh, the accessible interfaces exposed to the system. You could do that. There are some we use cases, but usually we try to avoid it and just make the software usable. And in LibreOffice, uh, what is the most important thing, if you will? Uh, so it's the accessible interface, so how LibreOffice exposes itself to assistive technologies. Uh, it's how you can navigate inside the interface. So usually keyboard navigation, because it's, it's by far the most uh, accessible of all and most uh, <coughs> specialized device somehow emulate a keyboard. And it has this very important difference, like if you compare to a mouse, that you have a current position that is on something, like a current button. A uh, current position is outside your text. And you, you can move back and forth to it. You, you don't, you're not trying to find something uh, that might or might be there. You, you kind of know, if you don't see the screen, you, don't, you have no idea if you move your mouse to the right, will it find anything? Maybe, maybe not. Depends where is the mouse. Normally with keyboard navigation, like tabbing through an interface, you go to something else. You might not know what it will be, or where is what you're looking for, but there will be something. So you're going forward in your interaction with the, 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 the software. And there are the visual adjustments that I won't talk much about, but it was, it's, it's the same I already mentioned, like uh, low, co high contrast, uh, color inversion for like if you got um, um, light sensitivity. Uh, helps for dyslexia or anything else. And so testing actively in LibreOffice. We got several things. So the first one, the one which is there, it's not real, but the one I will talk about, and it's the newest, the oldest newest thing, if you will. So it's the one which is there for the longest time that is kind of not from the, the early Sun era, is the linting of uh, and validating of the, the, the UI 
dialogue. The dialogues mostly, but the, the UI definitions of those dialogues. So uh, Michael mentioned it. So there is a tool with the very nice uh, name of GLA11Y that looks at um, the, the definition Sorry. Yep. That looks like the definitions, uh, how, well, the, the, the XML, and tries to find things that should go either find labels that don't seem to that should go to so, with something, but it's not uh, linked. So there is no relation between between this label and a control. And uh, the other way around, controls that are orphaned, that don't label themselves, but don't have a relation to a label. And it's the most common problem inside uh, regular dialogues is that you have a control, but it, it has no information to what it controls. You might have a label that says like, uh, this is something, colon, and then you have another control, but a screen reader cannot any assistive technology, but for example, a screen reader cannot know what that control go goes with. So is that description for that control? If there is a relation, there is a way to tell. It's how you told it. But if there are none, there's just two different things. One label that you might never see because you usually don't, do not uh, in travel, well, uh, move through labels uh, because they're not focusable. And one control that doesn't do, you don't know what it does. You may try to change it and see what happens. Uh, but this tool is clever enough to find both, suggest what might go together, and most importantly, it has been done in a way that has very low uh, false positives. So usually, if it reports an issue, there is an issue. There are, there can be situations where it's wrong. We know at least one that is not wrong, but is unfixable at the time. Uh, but it supports, uh, sorry, maybe I'm in front of everything. <laughs> uh, so you've got suppression lists, which, and false positive lists. False positive lists are for real things that are, well, things that are reported by the, the tool and that are not an actual issue, it's a problem in the tool. And suppression lists are just to get rid of issues. So what we did at first, I don't know what, what you have in my... Yeah, what we did at first when introducing the tool inside LibreOffice Build System and CI was to put basically everything it reported into a suppression file. So we could see new issues uh, because there was, I, I don't remember the name, the numbers, but it was hundreds. There are, it was reporting hundreds of issues, so it was just daunting and you, no, nobody would notice uh, the 101th new issue. And we cannot stop the, the, the build uh, because of, of that new issue. And this tool can also, to some extent, uh, learn, be taught about new elements without altering the tool. So you could basically tell it uh, this, um, this XML node should behave like something, like it, it, basically what, what Michael told about roles, you could basically tell it this behaves basically like a button or basically like a label and things like that. So you could if we had an element it didn't know about, but should to do its job properly, you could tell it, yeah, treat it like one of the things it already knows, or we can extend the tool if need be. And the good thing is, again, yeah? So you were mentioning that uh, when the tool was implemented, uh, the existing issues uh, were added to that list, yeah. And the, the, there were hundreds of them. Do you know how many are still there, like the main ones? Uh, no. That's a, an excellent question, but I don't know. I, I think the suppression lists are still the same size because they were not cleaned up. 
but some issues has been fixed. So we need, that's the, the thing we need to do with those is to review everything. So uh, at the time, I don't know. So it's an easy hack for that. Yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, that's what I'm mentioning. It is boring. It might be tedious and time consuming, but it's quite easy. The, the easiest solution, and that's what I would start with, would be get rid of, the, well, move <laughs> the, the subtraction file away and see what we get. Is it better or is it still a mess in that? I, I expect it to be better, really. We, have, we had uh, fixes in the, the area and Michael did some, but did you remove the, the suppression that goes with it? I think the tool even warns that there are yeah. things in the suppression file that are no longer there. So oh. There shouldn't be any false entries in there. Okay, okay. That I didn't remember, sorry. So maybe the, the suppressions are still uh, quite long. Uh, but again, we need to review that uh, and move the, if there are real f false positives in those lists, move them to the uh, false positive lists and the other ones uh, fix them. And so we might need reporting every single one of them uh, as a different bug to Michael <laughs> or, or just see what, what it needs to be done. And usually it's very easy and the tool even tells, hints you to what you should do. But usually the process is very simple of just adding a relation between the two things that goes together. It's usually just as simple as that. And you, you get to, add, to modify just the, the UI definition for the XML definition for the dialogue and you have fixed the issue. You remove the, the entry, you get something to somebody to validate your, your thing. Jenkins should, and you should be good to go. And if you're interested, uh, you can look, right? I don't have the sources. Uh, well, I won't open the source right now, uh, but you can look, it's in the Salam Sanitizer's UI and there's, uh, I think, two directories deeps of suppression files. Um, so apart from that, we have ye old Java tests, some of them. And they are not all so useful because some of them were probably, it's all speculative because I never met anybody that wrote uh, any of those, but some of them seem to be um, exercising the, the test framework, which makes sense, but it's not an actual useful test of the interface. Um, some people might run them, but not everybody does. Uh, many are even disabled because they caused problems, weird issues, nobody knew how, either or how to fix or what did they even mean. So there are a lot of those that are uh, just uh, disabled, so they don't run. But the good thing is, it's fairly easy to port to CPP unit and those most more people run them and the CI run them runs them. Uh, it's if you know anything about you know in Java and in C++ it's quite trivial to, to do. It's harder if you try to use <laughs> the result of my work because you have to adapt to the simplified versions you could use but it's still the logic itself is very uh, it's very similar. There's not nothing uh, Java specific or anything like that. So it's pl plain, you know, using the the X accessible interfaces and sometimes others to 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 interact with documents. But it's just you know. And if you're interested in uh, seeing the the conversion from uh, <coughs> Java to CPP unit, J unit to CPP unit, uh, I've got an example in that wiki page and a lot of other things on that wiki page. And now, so that's what I've been working on lately. It's been one and a half year, but lately, <laughs> I say lately. <laughs> um, is internal CPP unit test for the, okay, <laughs> for the um, internal UNO interfaces. Um, 
so what doses do, uh, what they should do, is interact with the UI just uh, similar to what uh, an message technology would or a user would to be closest po to possible to what uh, actually happens in the field. And uh, there are helpers for that, and uh, we got even support for dialogues, which was a big thing, but <laughs> it worked. Uh, no, it does not all work, work on um, macOS. If anybody knows how to fix that, please, I'd be more than, more than happy to try and see if I can help in anything, but I'm not knowledgeable about macOS much, and we have a weird issue nobody figured yet. Um, that's a framework I worked on, so basically helpers and base classes and everything to make your life easier writing a test. But in the process, of course, I wrote some tests, some tests that exercise the framework and some tests that test real things. Because uh, we found some issues uh, in the process and uh, wrote tests for them. And Michael and others fixed those. Thank you. <laughs> but we need more. So you could again look at that page, which has most of the uh, developer uh, information you might need about the API, how to, how to use it, uh, kind of tutorial, if you will. Um, and if you want to write a test, it should be fairly easy using that. that it does, like any, any other kind of test, you should just have to write the actual thing you want and not like if you look at the Java test we had, usually it's a lot of boring boilerplate because there was no, nothing to help. Um, and finally, uh, I added a VCL plugin layer uh, C CPP unit test, uh, quotes because it's written C++ and it used this framework, but it's a bit different. Um, and it tests at the time, I only have one for the GTK3 VCL plugin. Uh, and it runs in CI with uh, basically no problems ever. <laughs> no, actually we have, uh, sometimes we have failures that we don't know why they happen. Uh, they look like timeouts but uh, we need to know more on why is that. It's, it's not bad, I don't know if we have numbers. Um, I need to talk to people to know if I can get numbers and links, but uh, they show up from time to time in the ESC report, so you might have seen them. Uh, but it's not too bad. I think we got like, sometimes we have four or five uh, in a week, and uh, sometimes we have none. But it, I don't know, we need to figure that out. But it works pretty well. Uh, and none of those issues are tests failing. Like it's never that uh, the, 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 the tests should uh, find a, a value wrong. It's just that somehow it time out, times out at one or, or the other levels. If a, if a test itself times out, of one of, of its requests communicating with LibreOffice times out. Because what we do, with what I do in, in those, is to um, take, in a CPU unit test, uh, I take, uh, I, I, I walk the internal you know, representation for the, um, for the interface, and I try to see communicating with the platform similar to what uh, uh, an assistive technology like a screen reader would uh, use. And I see, I compare whether the information match with a little bit of transformation to, to match the, the, what the VCL plugin did. Because in some area, as uh, uh, Michael mentioned, uh, there are coordinates that are different uh, different coordinate systems or different uh, little things like that. And uh, we got some things fixed, a discord and fixed. The, the, the funniest one, the funniest one it was that we didn't have any uh, description for anything 
uh, on with using the GTK3 uh, VCL plugin, and that was a real obscure a change. Well, a change for a real obscure issue that changed the class layout and uh, broke something. But it was discovered and fixed, so it kind of works. It probably kind of works because it can uncover issues and does not. Uh, for now, have false positives once. Uh, but we need more coverage because I only covered uh, a subset of the interfaces that exist. I didn't go through everything uh, and um, even not everything on Michael's list he showed. So it has, just for like uh, the basics, he showed of on the accessible, accessible context and have something for the text and a couple of other things, but uh, we need to extend that to anything that exists, to all the uh, UNI interfaces that can exist. And hopefully, it could inspire other uh, visual plugin tests for other platforms, even Windows, Mac OS, Qt, or anything. It's a different uh, work, especially on Windows and Mac OS, because you cannot use the same library I'm using to communicate with uh, the, the platform. You'd have to use uh, whatever the platform uh, has, but something similar should be, should be doable. So to summarize, we got currently a test, we got the static analysis of few definitions, which are, is the GL, GLA11Y tool um, that runs in CI. Uh, we got the CPP unit tests for the internals, and most of the framework, but we could have more tests, so that is pretty easy. And we got the sing singular <laughs> visual plugin tests. I put uh, plural by SLI. And this covers basically everything from the, the internals to reaching the user. So we have, we can be sure that if we fix something in the internals, like exposing something or changing, uh, fixing how a uh, text is uh, exposed, uh, it reaches the user, so it's an actual fix, at least a user on GTK3, but we could hope to have more. Uh, but uh, there are other things we could do. Uh, and uh, apart from these tests and fixing what Michael is doing, like how things are presented on screen readers, uh, what could be improved that uh, would have a real impact would be improving keyboard navigation through the interface. Like try and use and make real documents without ever touching the mouse. Some things are just not, or I don't know how to do, the, do them, but it's not possible. For example, it, interacting with a frame is really complex. So for a screen reader user, for a blind user, even knowing there is a frame is hard, if not impossible. And so yeah, there are other non specific uh, nothing it's not specific to a, a screen reader or, or a impaired person but it's just if you try to remove your mouse some things don't work and they need that to work okay so that's was about it uh, i'd like to thank everybody that uh, suffered me and my pull requests <laughs> My major requests and uh, well, get changes, we call them here, sorry. Uh, including uh, Kalon, including uh, Christian, um, Stefan that wrote stuff for me and I ended up not using. <laughs> and uh, of course, Michael and everybody else that could, uh, helped at any level. Thank you. <laughs>